another start home fit workout coming at you. I've got my lovely assistant and daughter, Lexa, here. Say hi, Lexa. <laughs> so, Lexa may help me to demo this workout. We don't know if it's going to happen yet or not. But, you're going to do two movements in a ladder format to start off with. So, the first movement is going to be a PVC pipe sit up. You can use a PVC pipe, you can use a broomstick, whatever you want. Even if you don't have one of those or you can't get those feet up high enough, you can just have your feet on the ground and then do an anchored sit up that way. The next movement after is going to be your dive bomber push up. So, this is fairly taxing on the core, the shoulders, puts you into a different position than just a push up. Your rep scheme is going to be one and one, two and two, three and three. And those reps are going to continue to go up as long as the clock is running. So you're gonna set a 10 minute clock. This is a ladder style workout. You're gonna climb by one rep every round that you complete. So one and one, two and two, three and three. The goal is not to go fast with this because this is gonna be taxing. The faster you go on the sit-ups, the less recovery you're gonna have before you go into those dive bomber push-ups. So take your time in between. You don't have to go fast. You're gonna get a little bit of accumulation of work here. So uh, that, that level of fatigue is gonna go up when you get to like round five, six, seven. Um, if you're feeling good close to the end, go faster, but I strongly doubt that you will. With those dive bomber push-ups, we want you to be nice and slow and controlled with that movement. So basically, you're getting those hips up nice and high into that pike position. You're gonna dive under that fence or dive under that barbed wire fence and then pretend you saw something that you didn't wanna see, like maybe your naked neighbors on the other side of that fence. So you're just gonna back right out, leading with the hips and then pressing through. This is very taxing on the shoulders and the chest, the core. So make sure that when you are doing this movement, you're going nice and slow. This movement shouldn't be done very quickly. So nice and slow and controlled, start to finish. Part B for today's workout is a 15 minute AMRAP called quads, core, hammies, and more. You're gonna do four movements for this workout. The workout starts off with 10 goblet squat jumps. With those squat jumps, we wanna to try to keep a nice upright torso, keep that weight out in front, and as long as your feet leave the ground at the top of that jump, we're good. Then you're gonna follow it up with 10 oblique crunches per side. Even before you initiate those oblique crunches, make sure that left elbow's down on the ground, right hip is forward slightly, right foot is forward, and you should be feeling those obliques even before you start that contraction and drive that rib cage down to your hips. Followed by 10 hip hinges, holding on to that dumbbell or kettlebell in front, whatever weight you want to use. For the hip hinges, you could use one or two kettlebells or dumbbells. This is a, a stiff-legged deadlift variation, so when you hinge, back stays flat the whole time. If you hold it by the head of the dumbbell, it might limit your range of motion, so we won't be able to get as low that way. If you end up holding the dumbbell by the handle, it'll allow you to get a little bit lower. So when we're doing this, we want to make sure that we're feeling tension in those hamstrings. We're keeping those legs fairly straight. You could have a slight bend in the knee, but really drive those hips back, get these guys firing, and then fire those hips through, fire those glutes at the top. Stand up nice and tall, abs are tight. The last movement is that Cossack squat. When you're doing those Cossack squats, really try to shift that weight from one side to the other. Keep your feet in the same position, but as you transfer your weight over to that left side, for example, turn those toes on the right foot up. So you're really gonna be loading up that left side. Balance your weight between your midfoot and your heel so that when you do stand up, you're not on the balls of your feet, putting more pressure on the knee or forcing the quads to do more work. Hopefully you're liking the workouts. If you have any questions, throw them up and we're more than happy to answer them. Let us know how you're enjoying them and how you're feeling after you do them. Take care everyone.